Southeast Conference official Dale Kelly on the right, on the left, Bob Showalter of the Big Ten. Al McGuire, any comment about this? I don't believe in split officiating. You'll notice that the coaches will attack the officials in the opposite conference. Dick will go after the SEC guy, and Hall will go after the Big Ten man. I believe officials should be from a separate conference in an intersectional game like this. It's very important for the officials to call an early foul that's a half a foul to show they're governing the game. If they don't call it, they'll become a bloodbath. Interesting point, and Digger Phelps already spent some time talking with the SEC official Dale Kelly. All right, Bill Lambeer, number 52, 6'11", center for the dark-shirted Notre Dame Irish, will jump against Mike Phillips of Notre Dame, number 53. Tip is controlled by Kentucky. Truman Clayton, number 22. Kyle Macy, number 4. They get it inside. They double-team. Rick Roby inside, and we have a quick foul. A quick foul on Notre Dame, and, and it's on Rich Branning. I think it's going to... See on Rich Brenning coming back in, but you can see that Notre Dame's going to start the tempo, and Al said that might have been called a half a foul, but Notre Dame's going to play a very aggressive game with Hanslick really going after Gibbons. Ruben Clater, 22, they go low inside to Phillips, feeds off to a wide open Jack Gibbons. Jack Gibbons, the leading star for Kentucky, averaging nearly 19 points a game, and the fifth leading all-time Kentucky scorer puts the Wildcats in front. Branding is number 12, 45 is Dave Batten, and we have an offensive foul called against Hanslick of Notre Dame. Pretty good solid screen set by Hanslick. He just didn't come to a complete stop before he set the screen. I was surprised in that last play, Dick, that Hanslick was left without Givens, and uh, that's the man he's supposed to stay with as best he can. Notre Dame has some pressure in the backcourt as Clayter will bring it up, chased by Branding. Number 22 got a starting job when Jay Scheidler broke a bone in his foot. High post man is Mike Phillips, 55. Kentucky and White. Good aggressive man-to-man -man by both clubs. Rick Roby, 53. A very big team as Macy had a screen there. Gives it up. Phillips outside. This ball knocked away by Duck Williams. Loose ball and it's picked up by Hanslick. And he'll call a Kentucky foul as Hanslick made a fine play. He's all over the court. He is all over the court. There was a mismatch inside, and Kentucky wasn't patient because you had Branning on the inside with Roby. But Kentucky just couldn't get the handle on the ball. Good call. Don Duck Williams, number 25, co-captain and leading scorer for the Irish, brings it up with Rich Branning, number 12. Branning, the playmaker on this team. He's guarded by Kyle Macy. That left to the key. Knocked away, and a fine play by Gibbons. And I'll tell you, they're playing this game like it's an NCAA final off the opening minutes. That was Rick Roby, 6'10", going on the floor for a loose ball. Just a super play by the Bing Young guy. Good interception by Givens, and watch Roby go down on the floor. Super play here, and good call by the official. Later brings it across to Givens, 21. On the weave, Macy goes low inside. Phillips, I'll tell you, Phillips is so strong, he knocked Lambeer at 250s down on the floor, and it's 4 to nothing, Kentucky. You can't allow in that single post to let Phillips get in that low and that deep. A foul away from the uh, ball, and he'll call it on Kentucky. It'll be on uh, number 21 for the Wildcats, Jack Gibbons, his first personal foul. I think, I think it'll be interesting uh -huh. for the fans to watch the solid screens under the basket by these two powerful teams because they're really setting some blocks. Bill Hanslick will inbound number 42. Bruce Flowers and uh, Kelly Trapuca have been the starting forwards, but Hanslick gets the call. He's a good defensive player. He's driving the baseline, got a step on Gibbons and made a good move on Gibbons to put Notre Dame on the board. Probably surprised Goose a little bit with his offensive mindedness, but we've seen Hanslick play before and he is uh, an aggressive young player. Pressure in the backcourt, but Truman Clater brings it across. Later is a junior, 6-1 from Toledo, Ohio. They look inside. High post Phillips. Gibbons goes low. Hanslick tries to bat the ball away, and Kentucky has it. Gibbons inside, and he's got it. Good move inside and good persistence off the offensive board by the Wildcats. Opening minute, 17.45 remaining in the first half. That misses the shot. Lambeer. Has another chance in time to Hanslick with the layup. Twice in a row we've seen teams get that second opportunity to score, and this is something both clubs will have to stop because it's a key factor in both teams' game plan. Kentucky starting three seniors, a junior and a sophomore. Kyle Macy throws the ball away. You don't see many mistakes from Macy. 
who has really become uh, coming on as the point guard as we look at Joe Hall, the coach of the Kentucky Wildcats in his sixth year. Game being played in Louisville. Of course, Kentucky plays its home games in Rupp Arena in Lexington. But this is really not a neutral game by any means. Lambert is setting some high screens now, coming out, trying to get picks for everybody inside. Lambert is blocked by Phillips, taken down by Gibbons. Phillips, good defense inside for the Wildcats, who lead by two. And Phillips traveled before going up. We're going to see a lot of body contact inside this afternoon. Now, remember when the game Al was talking about three years ago, when Phillips and Roby were freshmen, they kind of spelled each other. Now both in there like bookends on the inside. Make this team awesome with their inside strength. Rich Branning, Californian, and the point guard for Notre Dame. Lambeer setting a screen for Batten. Inside is clear. Now Lambeer goes low. Branning working against Macy. Baseline jumper. Does not drop. And they're battling the boards against the glass. And we'll have a foul on Notre Dame. He's going to be on hands like going over the top. And uh, he was a little bit overmatched there. But aggressive again. 36-year-old Digger Phelps. Second. Personal foul on Hanslick. Kentucky's turned the ball over three times already. We now have a zone defense used by Notre Dame. They've switched out of their man-to-man. -man. We'll have to see, Dick. They may just be camouflaging this a little bit because of the way Notre Dame, the way that Kentucky is set up. Let's just see. Are they going to stay in the zone? The way to break the zone is outside shooting, and Truman Plater missed it. But a Notre Dame foul, and the first foul on Duck Williams. Foul is on the that's the 14th foul. Al McGuire. Uh, Notre Dame uses a, a matchup zone. They'll pick up the cutters and pass them along in there. Con uh, Notre Dame's trying to pressure Kentucky a little bit, but it won't work because Roby's a little bit too tough uh, a center for handling the ball. They can't, they can't cover him defensively in a pressure situation. Ruben Clater has missed only one free throw in 10 so far this year. I think that's an interesting point that Al brought out about the matchup there because the way Kentucky sets their pattern offensively, it, it sets itself pretty well for the matchup defense. We'll just have to watch the cutters and see how long they stay with it. Wildcats lead 8-4 to four with 16-10 remaining in the first half here in Louisville. Branding controlling outside in the corner to Batten. And Hanslick gets three inside, dribbles once, goes up, and a foul on Kentucky inside. Notre Dame worked that play almost to perfection, and will have a foul on Kentucky on Gibbons, his second personal foul, and the third team foul against the Wildcats. So Hanslick will go to the line when we resume in just a moment. College basketball will continue with Kentucky leading Notre Dame 8-4. For 78, Mercury Bobcat Runabout has added standard features and lowered its sticker price. Steel belted radials, power front discs, front stabilizer bars, style steel wheels, trim rings, tinted glass. If you love a bargain, you'll love that Bobcat. And Bobcat respects gas. EPA rated 25 city, 35 highway. It's worth your money to love that Bobcat. Three door or wagon, you love that Bobcat. <laughs> Once there were two drivers, the not-so-smart driver who never got a tune-up, and the smart driver who got better gasoline mileage because he'd see his wise friend, his independent Texaco retailer, to get tuned up, checked out, even taken for a test ride. But the not-so-smart driver ran rough and ate up fuel. Finally, he just conked out. Don't be a dumb bunny. Save money and trouble. See your independent Texaco retailer. An officer likes to regain his honor in the most spectacular movie ever made for TV. Both bitches, Robert Powell, Simon Ward, James Seymour, star in The Four Feathers. Tomorrow at 9, 8 Central. Four minutes gone by in this game. Al McGuire's had a chance to check out the styles of these two teams so far. Well, uh, Notre Dame wants to play a methodical game, but I think once Kentucky, if they do move up any higher in the score, they'll move to a 1-3-1 one, one zone, and that will give Notre Dame fits because it'll break their rhythm. Dick, to counter that, I think what... Uh, we're going to find from Digger is a change in his lineup, probably coming back with Trapuca, who's an outstanding shooter if they go into any zone. And I think they might look for Trapuca early, too, because they've got to get some points on the board. Notre Dame losing uh, only to Indiana, but they defeated tough UCLA at Pauley Pavilion, which is a tough task. 
Hanslick is on the line shooting a pair. Bill Hanslick of Beloit, Wisconsin, averaging 3.4 points a game coming in, but as we mentioned, Digger Phelps is not using him for his offensive capabilities necessarily. 8-5 to five to score. Kentucky by three. Roby and Phillips on the outside. They're trying to set up specifically against the matchup. Good outside shooter is Kyle Macy. Averaging nearly 12 a game. A transfer from Purdue University. And he has given Kentucky good, steady point guard work out there. 10 to 5 in favor of the Wildcats. Here's the 1-3-1 one, one zone that Al was talking about on that shot. Yep. And through the five-second call in the zone. Amazing. Well, we're going to have a chance in a moment or two, perhaps, if they stay in the 1-3-1 to show you the difference between Kentucky's 1-3-1 and most 1-3-1 defenses. Branning at 6-3 will jump against Macy at 6-3. Tip controlled by the Wildcats Phillips. Macy, Roby in the corner. Truman Plater back to the man-to-man -man for Notre Dame. 15 20 to go in the half 10 to 5. Lambert doing a good job leaning on Phillips. Phillips has a hard time getting position. Normally he just knocks people out of the way in there. There he's got position. Later goes low and Phillips goes anyway. He, he did a good job. Well. Did a good job. He was having a hard time getting position then just used his body. Phillips has four points along with Gibbons the top scorers for the Wildcats. Hanslick has five for Notre Dame. There's the 1-3-1 one, one again. Missing outside is Batten. And inside, Henslick for a second effort in the basket. Will count in a foul. Al McGuire. Uh, that 1-3-1 one, one zone, most zones allow you to pass on the perimeter. But the 1-3-1 one, one denies the pass from the guard to the forward. And it also, they keep a guard underneath the basket so he can cover the weak spots in the corner. It's very interesting for the fans to understand that the three big men are along the foul line about 15 feet up. And the man under the basket for Kentucky is a guard. Lambert leaves the game on Orlando Woolridge. Number 32 comes in for Notre Dame. He's a 6'9 freshman from Mansfield, Alabama. They call him Tree. He's gained about, or grown about seven inches since high school. And he is the cousin of New York Knicks coach Willis Reed. So Woolridge at 6'9 replaces Lambert. That foul was on Hanslick or Phillips. Hanslick now has eight points in the ball game. And the press, full court zone press put on by Notre Dame. 12-2-8 in favor of Kentucky. They bring it across, and the big man will do it. Usually, Roby would be the guy back there to do that, and he's very effective beating the press coming up and helping out with passing. High post is, is Roby and Phillips. They have a double post. Baseline jumper by Kyle Macy. The rebound by Woolridge. And the freshman grabs the board. 12-2-8 with 14-20 remaining in the first half. Kentucky is led all the way. Duck Williams looking inside. They can't go there. Wildcats in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. And off Woolridge's hands, turnover turns the ball back to the Wildcats. And another Irish substitution, Bruce Flowers, number 34, who uh, has been starting and is off his uh, mark of a year ago, averaging only five points a game, enters the ball game, the 6'8 junior from Huntington Woods, Michigan as Duck Williams goes out. So Notre Dame going with the heft now. Yeah, they sure are, and I'm really surprised. Uh, maybe possibly something's wrong with Kapuka because they need some scoring punch in the outside against that zone, particularly in the corners. They'll have a Notre Dame foul. Al McGuire. Uh, I think they're moving them in to split the back man on that zone, that 1-3-1 one, one zone, and then they'll float the ball high to either side. We see the fouling down here on the side. Kyle Meissey is going to be a real good point guard for this club. Good hands by Roby putting the ball down the floor for a big man. Foul was on Batten, his first. Notre Dame now with five team fouls. Kentucky four and an errant pass by Truman Plater. Kentucky had turned over the ball considerably more this year, earlier this year, than they had in the past couple of years. But in the UKIT or the Kentucky Invitational and in the game against Iona, Kentucky started to come into their own the way Joe Hall would like to see them play. They're back to man-to-man -man defense again, which is a good move by Joe Hall. He's mixing things up also. Flowers throws the ball away. Turnovers both ends, and that's the fifth turnover by Notre Dame. Kentucky four, and Digger Phelps, who says, we don't play in a holiday basketball tournament because this is our tournament. Well to eight, Wildcats in front. Thirteen and a half to go in the opening period. Rick Roby, a plater 22, drives the lane. And the Irish 
has fouled for the sixth time, 16 foul. That's Dan Wilcox reaching in. He was beat badly that time by Truman Clater. You've got to have a little better position on a man who's got the ball on the floor. Clater's a real good outside shooter. It is a 16 foul, so Macy will trigger it in underneath. Stan Wilcox, a 6'3 freshman. The bigger Phelps going more and more to the first-year players as Gibbons misses. Inside is Roby. There is a case stick of no block out. If you're going to play a team like Kentucky, you've got to block out first, rebound second. If you're going for the ball, they'll go right over the top of you, as Roby did in that case. Roby averaging 13 and a half points a game out of New Orleans, Louisiana. One of three seniors, and they call another five seconds. And we'll have a jump ball between Kyle Macy and Rich Branning. And the Kentucky pressure on the outside is paid off. We'll see Roby coming in on the boards. You can see Batten's under the basket. Now, there might have been a little foul there, but still, you've got to block a man like Roby out. You can't let him come in on the left. Phillips grabs the tip for the Wildcats, who lead 14-8. to 12.51 to go first half. Man-to-man -man defense by Notre Dame. And they go low inside, and Phillips has the ball out of the way in a superb defensive play. And the crowd thought it was a foul, and that's a unanimous call, except for the Notre Dame fans here. I've got to think he goes into that ball, but really shows you the leaping ability in Woolridge. Woolridge misses Flowers, has a chance. He's double teamed, puts up a weak shot from the baseline. I think it looks like... Uh, Digger is going to need some time out right here to get his team settled down. A good play on the inside. We'll see this play. He's actually running the bat. This is a goaltend right here. Ball's on the way down, no doubt about it. Referee missed it. I think they were surprised at how high Wildridge got up and how quickly he got up. Dan Wilcox controls the tip as Wilcox wanted for Notre Dame. Lead trailing 14-8. Flowers open, top of the key. And Slater comes out of the pack, a three-on-three -three break. Roby. Oh, beautiful play. No basket. Phillips came in with a follow-up. No basket. And a foul called. Even though Roby missed this particular layup, it shows you what a gifted ball player he is because he's going to come down, catch the ball on the run, show you good speed. He come in here with his right hand, then the left hand, and lay the ball up. Good athlete. And here comes Phillips charging in again, and that was a good call. Phillips charging in for the foul. And that is his third foul in Woolridge. Did not expect the pass by Branding, and they turn the ball over, and freshmen will be freshmen. Right, Al McGuire? Well, I think that Digger might be waiting for the commercial timeout. He better call his own timeout, or he might slow the game. Here. We have a timeout. 12 minutes remaining in the first half with the score. The Kentucky Wildcats, 14, and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, 8. Son, let these figures get that bank loan. Let the figures speak to the bankers, Dad. Your breath. My breath. Try scope. It works. I'll use my mouthwash. There. You smell medicine. My mouthwash fights bad breath. Scope gets breath clean like your antiseptic. Plus your breath minty fresh, not medicine. I'll try it. <sighs> clean and fresh. <laughs> Scope's a great <laughs> asset. Scope fights bad breath. Scope doesn't give medicine breath. Carrie, did you unpack my dander shampoo? You must have gotten lost in the moon. But here's my beauty shampoo. Mmm, nice mild smell. What will it do for my dandruff? Just wait. Great looking hair. Yeah, but my dandruff. Use my shampoo every time and it'll control dandruff. Maybe better than yours. Come on. Head and shoulders. Now what do you think? I think I wouldn't make a move without it. Or you. Head and shoulders. Strong against dandruff. Gentle on your hair. It'll be the rubber match between the Raiders and the Broncos, and all it means is a trip to the Super Bowl. Tomorrow at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Dick Enberg and Lynn Dawson will be on hand. All starts with NFL 77 at 1.30, the AFC Championship game on NBC. 14-8, Kentucky leading. Phillips has 3,000 given two for Kentucky. Hanslick has 2,000. He has really played well starting this ball game although right now he is on the bench we have Bruce Flowers 34 Dave Batten 45 as you look at the season statistics thus far Woolridge 32 and in the backcourt Branding number 12 and Wilcox 24 so we have two freshmen for Notre Dame Kentucky with Truman Clater across number 22 53 is Roby 4 is Macy 
Gibbons 21, and into the freshman Alex Sinas, who took steps. So Kentucky's Joe Hall put in Chuck Alex Sinas, number 50, a 6'10 freshman from Morris, Connecticut, who's shooting at a 60% flip. Another powerful young player. They are deep and they are big and they are strong and the weight program that Joe Hall has put in effect has really smoothed down those Greyhounds. Branding misses a shot inside and Slater comes down with it. And a pass intended for Roby led him too much. We haven't had much scoring for several minutes now. Still 14-8 as Bill Lambeer returns to the game for Notre Dame. Joe Hall, who was an assistant under Adolph Ruff for five years on both of those occasions that the ball went out of bounds. I think what Slater did not have, he had a great idea, but he didn't have a good angle for the backdoor pass, and that's what hurt him. Jay Scheidler, number 25, is in at guard for Kentucky. Jeff Carpenter, number 10, comes in in the backcourt for Notre Dame. Lambeer missed last year as he flunked out of Notre Dame, back in school, and they'll call a foul on the Irish. It'll be a three-second violation. It is not a foul. So we have Scheidler, who broke a bone in his foot, lost the starting role to Truman Slater, trying to get back in there, number 25. Roby is a high post. Alex Sinas, the freshman, is low. Out to Macy. Gibbons, working on Flowers. Good move, and goaltending against Woolridge inside. That was goaltending. What, what Woolridge is doing is standing right under the basket and then making the block. He's just too close to the hoop. See, he's right underneath the basket. Almost always has to be goaltending when you touch that ball. Six points for Gibbons. Eight points for Hanslick. The high score is in a low-scoring affair. Almost halfway through this first half of play in Freedom Hall in Louisville. Carpenter open, and no basket. A foul away from the ball before the shot. It's against Notre Dame, and it's against Lambeer, the center. Al McGuire. Uh, Notre Dame's picking down. That's what they get caught in the three seconds and the, and the blind picking. They, they like to pick down and be methodical, and they seem to be getting a whistle blown on them. And now we find out that Notre Dame is over the limit. It is their 17th foul, and they will shoot this on the one and one. And apparently not. That was a, that was, a, that was not a foul. It was a violation, and Digger Phelps thought it might have been. Alex Cenas picks up the loose ball inside. Oh, Beer the rebound. It's vicious on here. A tremendous physical battle inside. We have a bunch of redwood trees on both sides fighting inside. Lambeer playing outside against Alex Sinas. Woolridge outside. Misses. And Gibbons fights for the rebound. And he'll call the foul on Bruce Flowers of Notre Dame. And that will be the seventh foul. And there should be a shooting situation. Well, it should be. And I think you're right. You'll see it. I, I think right now, Dick, what we're finding about Notre Dame, they've got a young club in the ballgame, a relatively young. And they're not taking their time offensively. They don't want to turn it into a run-shoot game. And they need to go ahead and relax a little bit more into whatever pattern they're going to go with. Because Kentucky certainly likes this up-tempo style, even though they're not scoring too well themselves. Jack Goose Gibbons, 84% shooter from the free throw line. Moved ahead of Lou Dampier, fifth in the all-time scoring, but uh, keep in mind that uh, he played four years at Kentucky, uh, and that gives him a big edge. Kelly Trapuca, number 44, a name out of the past in sports annals has come in for Notre Dame along with Batten. There you have a good look at Jack Gibbons. Trapuca, of course, his dad was a great All-America quarterback at Notre Dame. His brother plays at Fordham now, and uh, another brother was uh, one of the top scorers in the country at Lafayette. 18-8, to eight and the biggest lead in the game for Kentucky. Ten points now. They're back into their zone again with Trapuca in the game. Look for him to try to get loose in the side. Duck Williams, 25. He hasn't had a chance to shoot much. Carpenter loses the ball to Alex Sinas as the zone just stuffed him out. Roby looks into Alex Sinas, guarded by Lambeer, and he misses, but Gibbons fights and wins the rebound on the baseline. He'll call a foul on Carpenter, and Gibbons will go to the line one and one. Dick, what surprised me a great deal. Here's Goose Gibbons. He had a good senior push-off there. There's going to be a timeout call right now, but there you see the foul. 9.44 remaining in this first half. Kentucky going to the zone because they have a lead. A 10-point lead, 18-8. to 8. It's Saturday afternoon all over America. And millions of people are enjoying something very special. The Metropolitan Opera, broadcast live on radio. This marks the 
38th year of Texaco's <laughs> Opera radio broadcast. And Texaco urges everyone to join us in supporting the Metropolitan, America's only national opera company. Well, the game was tied, but luck was on our side. Now it's all behind. Got Blue Ribbon on my mind. good paps. A lot to look forward to. See the world's finest golfers compete for top prize money in the Joe Garagiola Tucson Open next Saturday and Sunday afternoons on NBC. And Bruce Litsky took the $40,000 first prize last year at the Joe Garagiola Tucson Open. This is a neutral court, really not. This is a Kentucky home game. And does the crowd have an effect so far, Al McGuire? Uh, I think it has to get the crowd out. I think it's working on the subconscious of his ball players and the adrenaline of the Kentucky ball players. He's also uh, fallen into trap and playing in Kentucky's run-run game. They have to get back to a very methodical game. They've got to try to stay close to first half and maybe the fourth quarter take the game out. But otherwise, they'll be blown out of here. Kentucky shooting nearly uh, 50%, 7 for 15. Notre Dame, 3 for 13, and that's indicative so far. As the Wildcats' leading scorer, Jack Givens, hits the first of a 1-1. One 9.44 one. remaining in the first half. Notre Dame, 22-7 and seven last year. Kentucky, 26-4. and four. Both were ousted from the NCAA tournament by North Carolina. The runners-up to Marquette and Al McGuire last year. Sticking with the 1-3-1, and let's see if Notre Dame will slow down. They have a frantic pace that they're in in their offense. They need to get out of that. Branding has come in the game at guard. They swing it around, and Lambeer misses from the corner, gets his own rebound, and good second effort by Bill Lambeer from Toledo, Ohio. Went to high school in Palos Verdes, California, and is now 20-10. to 10. I think one of the weaknesses in any, any zone, obviously, but particularly the 1-3-1 one, one, the way Kentucky plays, is the fact that they don't have good blockout assignments. The other team should get some offensive rebounds. And missing by a wide margin with Roby, but there's that man Givens again. He misses. And Kelly Trapuca cradles the ball for the Fighting Irish. Number 44, Trapuca, a freshman and a man to watch. He can play guard or, guard or forward at 6-7. This is a way to break the zone. Cross court pass and Williams on the pass from Trapuca hits his first bucket of the ball game, the leading scorer for Notre Dame. 20 to 12 with 8.43 to go first half. As you look at Notre Dame, turn the ball over four more times than the Wildcats. Scheidler 25 gets it to the high post Alex Cenas. Macy goes out to Scheidler. Long shot by Scheidler. And Trapuca got position inside for the rebound. Scheidler had a great start last year with those long bombs, and it's really out of the range of most shooters, but he does have the uncanny ability to hit those. Lambeer finds an open branding, picked up quickly by Roby. Zone defense by the Wildcats. And Judy, and missing is branding, but will have a foul on Kentucky, away from the ball underneath. The Wildcats, 16 foul coming up now. who Joe Hall says is my sixth starter. Look how powerful he is, an indication of the great strength of this Kentucky team. Kentucky team reminds me of the great Indiana club a couple of years ago as far as that physical strength. They had the, the same type of players as the Lee that comes into the ballgame, and as Joe said, he's really a starter. He's not a sub. Still Notre Dame ball as Scheidler knocked it away. So James Lee averaging 11 points a game coming off the bench for Kentucky. Second percentage shooter from the field for the Wildcats. Pass comes out to Batten, 45, in low to Lambeer. Look at Scheidler knock the ball away to Rick Roby. Kentucky doesn't get down court and they can't break. But Lee inside with a shot and behind, they say it was deflected off the hands of Lee. A fine play by Lambeer behind. It looked like Lambeer had knocked it away, but they called it otherwise. I like to see this one myself. James Lee does a good job getting down, goes up for the shot. Here's Lambeer with the block. They call the foul on Lambeer, and I think what they, I mean on Lee, what they say he did is use his arm, his right arm there, to push away Lambeer, preventing from making a block. Tough call. Notre Dame has out-rebounded Kentucky by only a couple, and the Wildcats over the limit in fouls now. That's their 17th foul, and Rich Branning, who is the top free-throw shooter for Notre Dame, he has hit 24 of 27 coming into the ballgame. 
And believe it or not, this is the one and one. So, 7.50 to play in the half, 20 to 12. Kentucky has maintained control and the lead. Lee, double teamed inside against the zone. Kyle Macy tries a bank shot and it works. And it's 22 to 12. Wildcats by 10. Macy with four points. Very good pump fake by Kyle Macy. And now you see Kentucky switching up again, going back to man to man. And Alex Sinas knocked Trapuca to the floor. And the foul is called on Alex Sinas, his second foul. I think it certainly helps to have a very deep ball club. Al, you could point out here, here's Alex Sinas coming in with some fouls, but it makes no difference to Joe Hall. Well, they uh, they feel they exchange fouls. Joe uh, goes to his three, four centers, and by the time you realize that your starting center has four fouls and sitting on the bench next to you. Kelly Trapuca, 6'7", freshman. Notre Dame has missed their last two attempts on a one-and-one, and, one, and we'll have a jump ball. James Lee is on top, and underneath getting up will be Dave Batten. So Batten at 6'9", will jump against Lee at 6'5", but he is quick and strong, and he can leap. Dick, we ought to point out here, in fairness to Notre Dame, you know, they're one of the few clubs in the country at this time of the season anyway that's in a position physically to go up against Kentucky. Kelly Trapuca banks it in. That's so true. You won't find many that have the physical capabilities of Notre Dame except for the Wildcats. Eight-point lead. For the Kentucky, their biggest lead was 12 points. 7.05 remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire for Freedom Hall. Fine looping pass to Alex Sinas as they fronted the center, and he got inside. It's surprising how much Kentucky's going to the young freshman. He pushed off nicely there to get open, but it still was a good play on his part. So a 10-point lead again for Kentucky. Trapuca. Might have been fouled by Lee, and it is a foul on James, his second personal foul. And Trapuca will shoot. You know, the shot didn't count there, Dick, but it shows you what a great touch this young man has because Lee really had a hold of one of his arms, and he still made it. We have seen Wilcox, Trapuca, and Woolridge, three freshmen, coming off the bench in this first half as we look at Kelly and again we got to tell you about his dad Frank Rebuca in case you're trying to match the name with the past in college sports 24-15 24-16 now Kyle Macy he's 180 pounds doesn't look it well built also part of that weight problem program used by Kentucky Seidler against Branding Likes to get inside, dumps it out to Lee. Penetrating, tipped up, and inside, Alex Sinas, no basket. But you got to give credit to Alex Sinas with a bunch of sea of blue jerseys around him. He fought and he got the foul. I don't think James Lee figured that he was going to be this wide open when he got inside, and that's why he hesitated a little bit and putting that shot up made it a little more difficult than he should have. But Alex Sinas does a good job going up the second time. Powerful young man, puts it up, gets fouled before that. Dave Batten, second foul, Al McGuire. Uh, speaking to Joe Hall yesterday, I, I said, how come you're going to so much weight and strength? And he said he got it from the uh, European teams, the international teams, and also from the pros, but he mainly got the credit to the international teams. Some of these big guys, uh, Roby especially, had a lot of baby fat when they came here, and even in past seasons, but they worked it off. And this is a Greyhound team, even though they are over 6'9", 6'10", and weigh 230, 250. 26 to 16, Kentucky. Don Duck Williams, who's a streaky shooter, and when he's hot, Notre Dame is in great shape. All America candidate now has four points. Eight point lead. Branding tried to knock it away. Lee dumps it off. Baseline. Alex Sinas has his own rebound. Knocked away by Branding. And Seidler has the ball. After Ruby. And we'll have offensive foul called against Kentucky. It'll be on Alex Sinas, and that'll be the freshman's third personal foul. Really impressed with that young man, though. He's coming in there and just knocking people around. We'll see. Here's James Lee. He made a great play right before we caught him there. He goes and charges here. Gets the ball off. Shot misses. Now we'll see the action. Here's Alex Sinas. Good quick hands down there to go down for the ball. Jack Givens, number 21. Back of the game for Kentucky as William speeds Batten inside. The basket counts. And a Kentucky foul. No, it is a foul against Batten after the basket. And Digger Phelps is off the bench. But give Notre Dame two points. 
And Batten's first two points of the game, but he commits his third personal foul. 26 to 20, and Notre Dame cutting the lead. Al, I'd like to, you know, ask you a question. With so many inside screens there, the back door really isn't available, and with all the guys running to the basket, you can't penetrate very well. There's no, there's no room there, Billy, and um, the refs can blow the whistle anytime they want. It's just a, a football game underneath. I was sitting here thinking about the football coach at Kentucky and at Notre Dame. They must see these guys and just drool because the football players aren't as big as this. And both of the football teams at these institutions had outstanding years. Gibbons hits the first free throw. Orlando Woolrich has replaced Batten in the Irish lineup. 27 to 20, the Wildcats lead. Biggest margin, 12 points. Gibbons attempting his 12th point of the game, and he is the game high scorer to this point, and he hits it. 540 remaining in the first half. At halftime, Billy Packer and Al McGuire will commiserate and talk about the first half. Brokehead special basketball college halftime. Lambeer, Trapuca, working against Gibbons. Got a few inches on Jack, finds Williams inside. Good feed from Trapuca. That time there was a good clear, clear out by Lambeer. He got out of the way. Good pass. Oh! Orlando Woolridge dumps it through to the delight of the blue and white. They get Rick Roby. Rick Roby with Woolridge. Defending on the play, Roby has four points, and Kentucky is up by eight. Lambeer goes low to Woolridge, and they'll call a foul on James Lee, his third. That was a, quite a play by Rick Roby, stuffing at the other end. Well, you're showing what a fine athlete he is. He caught that ball on the run over his shoulder, went up and dunked it. Just a super play. Well, Lee Phillips and Alex Enos all have three personal fouls for the Wildcats. But they have the lead, 30-22, to 22, as a timeout with just under five minutes remaining in the first half here in Kentucky. In the era of energy engineering, Lincoln Mercury introduces the Zephyr four-door wagon. Zephyr wagons, energy engineered for mileage, 19 city, 29 highway. That beats Valari and Aspen's best rating by two miles city, four miles highway. Energy engineered for space. Cargo space rated four cubic feet bigger than Valare or Aspen. Mercury Zephyr. For mileage and space, it's like no wagon we've ever offered. You know what's really nice about working hard all day? Just sitting around later on, relaxing and enjoying tobacco. And just like me and some other guys, the way I enjoy tobacco is without lighting up. Because I use smokeless tobacco. My favorite brand is Go with the wintergreen taste. And you fellas that are just starting out might like to try Mild Happy Days. You just take a pinch and put it between your cheek and gum. Sit back and relax. On Black Sheep Squadron, Happy Boyington gets a new boss and the squadron is in trouble. Robert Conrad stars Wednesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain Time on NBC. Special 15-minute Rose Bowl free game before Michigan and Washington go out in the Rose Bowl on Monday at 4.30. Then the Orange Bowl at 8 o'clock between Arkansas and Oklahoma. And Lou Holtz, the colorful Arkansas coach, will be wired for sound, and you can hear his comments during the game, and that ought to be interesting. The granddaddy of them all in the Orange Bowl, Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Monday on NBC. Check, you know that, that catch Roby made before, that David Casper's catch last week in pro football over the shoulder. Roby's a bigger man than Casper, going probably just as quickly, caught the ball over his shoulder, went up and dunked the thing. Uh, just going to be a great prospect, don't you think, Al? First round draft choice, and, uh, and there's no doubt he, he'll be an All-American. He's, he's mobile and he's physical. Uh, he can hit the 15-foot jump shot. He got the whole package. Before Orlando Woolridge attempts his second free throw, we will not have a substitution because Bruce Flowers will replace Woolridge in the Notre Dame lineup. Woolridge hits two. He leaves the ball game as Flowers comes in for Notre Dame. 30 to 24, a six-point lead for Kentucky. They have played well, but they haven't been able to get away from Notre Dame yet. I think Digger's really doing a good job using his substitutes, trying to find the right combination, and trying to make sure his team's not intimidated by Kentucky. And if they can play well the next four minutes, it's going to be a fine second half. Roby 53 out to Macy number four. He's teamed to guard with Jay Scheidler, 25. Given with Trapuca. Macy. Man to man defense for Notre Dame. As LeVon Williams, 52, in the ball game for Kentucky. Scheidler did not have control as that pass was knocked away. 
He lost control. It was tipped away as it was intended for Roby inside. You know, Phillips has been out of the game a while. We'll see Scheidler going in there. Good back door by Roby, but a real difficult pass to catch. Pretty good job by Flowers on the back door defensively. On the inbound pass, we have a foul on Scheidler of Kentucky, his first. I was saying, Dick, Phillips has been out of the game for a while. It seems to me Kentucky's got to go back with him to get that offensive man in the middle that can put up some points for him because uh, Notre Dame really has played well after the shock of this, uh, the confrontation hit him in the, in the first six or seven minutes of the game. They're doing a good job right now. Branning shooting one and one. Yesterday, Kentucky had an open workout, drew 9,000 people here at Freedom Hall. An incredible display and a tremendous workout that thrilled the fans here. There you look at Mike Phillips. He broke all of Jerry Lucas's high school scoring marks in Ohio. Well, Digger well, now wants to talk to uh, Dale Kelly, of course. <laughs> Digger's calling dead ball foul, but that wasn't the situation at all. <laughs> Digger really on top of the game. Certainly one of the top young coaches in college basketball. Branding way off the mark on the second free throw attempt. Last touch by Flowers. It'll be Kentucky ball. Five-point Wildcat lead. Full court press. Scheidler. Across the line. With 4.20 remaining first half. Kyle Macy. Deflected by Trapuca. Knocked away by Lambeer. But Ruby recovers. What a move inside. And that's what Al McGuire was talking about. You remember when he made that gliding move with his right hand? That time he put it up with his left hand. He does have all the tools. Braining gave a look over to Digger Phelps. Roby has six points in the game. Gibbons with 12 is the high scorer. Hanslick with eight, leading scorer for Notre Dame. We haven't seen much of him since the early going. Good move here by Digger Phelps. Keep the ball game close and right into the half. Don't get blown out in that last three or four minutes. He's making Kentucky come on out. Of course, he now has to penetrate with the ball. It's not Kentucky's responsibility to come out, which he's doing right now, but he doesn't want to take any bad shots. Williams, 25, gets it out to Branning in the corner to Trapuca. If they have an opening, they'll shoot, but they will only take the good shot. Williams directing traffic. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. A close ball game. Seven-point lead by Kentucky. Now, we have a turnover. Uh, Dig is one of your best uh, bench coaches in the game, and I think if you can keep it close, then you never know what's going to happen in the second half. And, of course, just what he didn't want to happen happened, which was a turnover without a lot of pressure defensively. 3-11 to play in the half. Gibbons is looking inside, has to go out to Seidler. 32-25. to Phillips has the baseline cut off by Lambeer, and Kyle Macy hits from outside. Macy with six points, a fine outside shooter. The transfer from Purdue, and now a nine-point goal for Kentucky, and again the zone defense. See how the Irish play at this time. It's not that close right now. No, but they've got a different point spread, and they have to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. That's exactly the point. It was five, and now it's a nine, and so... You get yourself down five, and you have the ball. You can hold that thing right down to halftime if you have to, and maybe go in with just a three-point deficit, which is fine. Very key time in the ball game for Notre Dame right now. LeVon Williams foul. Flowers to shoot. Bruce Flowers find a defensive forward. Let Notre Dame field goal percentage the last two years, but shifted from center to forward with Lambeer coming back to school after taking off a season. Flowers has uh, dropped in his production. That's his first point. Four twenty-six, two thirty-nine to go. Gibbons baseline shot will drop. Gibbons has fourteen Red points in the first half, averaging eighteen on the year. Thirty-six, twenty-six, and now Notre Dame has to take it to him inside, beating Trapuca and Lambeer with a good catch. Two good catches there, one by Lambeer and one by Trapuca. Eight-point lead, two twelve remaining. Macy, the point guard. Baseline, going up high. Goose Gibbons from Lexington. Now, here's probably why Trafuca didn't get into the ball game earlier. He's now matched up against Gibbons. And this is what Digger Phelps was trying to guard against early. Trafuca goes in. It was blocked. And now we have the foul. Trafuca with a second effort. 
And the foul will be on uh, Seidler inside his second. Good pass inside. Uh, Kelly thought he had this first, but right here, he's a powerful young man also. Look at him battle. Good position. And pointing out against that zone, you do have an opportunity to get a lot of offensive rebounds. Trapuke is on the line. Digger Phelps had one great year at Fordham, 26-3, and three, and uh, has been at Notre Dame. This is his eighth year. Has won 121 games at South Bend. For Kentucky, Wayne Casey, number 20, a 6'2 junior guard from Morgan Field, Kentucky, enters the game. As Scheidler leaves, under two minutes to play, 152 in the first half. 38 to 30. Really impressed with the court savvy of Kyle Macy. He really changes this Kentucky team a lot with his style. Lavon Williams. And the ball knocked away, a foul call. Flowers or Williams. And it's on Duck Williams, the second foul. Woolridge comes back for Notre Dame. Hanslick and Trapuca each have eight points. Lambeer and Trapuca leave for Digger Phelps. He's used his bench as is Joe Hall considerably in this first half. So Levon Williams on the line, shooting one and one. Kentucky 38, Notre Dame 30. Al McGuire, a comment. They're both trying to shotgun their fouls among the whole team rather than have the fouls on some of the starters. So they have a pat hand going into the last quarter. Brady. And a turnover. LeVon Williams forced that turnover. Kyle Macy coming down, pulls up, and pulls up with a jump shot. Everyone went by him. He was open. Hanslick back in the game for Notre Dame clears the board. 118 to go first half, 38 to 30. Chance for Notre Dame to narrow the Kentucky lead to six against the 1 3 1 zone. In the flowers and in the corner, Chuck Williams' line drive shot is missed. And they call the foul on Bruce Flowers. He is disgusted. And that'll be his second foul. That was a tough foul, too, because Bruce had inside position. There was no need for him to throw the elbow. And it really cost Notre Dame because that was an extremely important possession. How does Al McGuire feel now that he's no longer coaching, seeing other animated coaches on the sidelines like Digger Phelps? Well, uh, I didn't know I was so obnoxious. <laughs> I guess I was worse than all these guys. But my mind races with them. Now, I, I then thought you should have played for one shot. But uh, Dick is an excellent bench coach, and Joe Hall is one of the best coaches in the business. The record's proven. Kyle Macy from Peru, Indiana. Best passer, they say, here at Kentucky since Larry Conley, who was a part of an NCAA finalist team in 1966, losing to Texas Western. Kentucky's won four NCAA titles. 40-30, to 30, Kentucky leading as we wind down to a minute to go. Macy now with eight points in the ballgame. Well, Yvonne Williams has that long arm stand over there on the sidelines, plays that wing position well. Brandy, right of the key. You give him the shot outside, he'll burn you. 40 to 32, Notre Dame pressuring in the backcourt. 45 seconds now to go in the first half. They break it with Levon Williams to Macy. Alley oop to Rick Roby. Roby takes a step, battered away by Woolridge. But Dwayne Casey grabs the ball in the backcourt and a foul on Hanslick. He chopped away at Dwayne Casey as he commits his third foul. Irish with a lot of grabbing and slapping fouls in the waning moments of this game. Well, it is. You really ought to start playing defense with your feet, not with your hands. And there was a lot of reaching, as you pointed out here, Dick, and that'll get you in trouble. Now, watch this shot right here. A great move by Roby. Now, here's a case. Whoa, what a block by Woolridge. And he likes to go up underneath that basket. And I can guarantee he's going to have a lot of goaltending violations before the year's out from that position. Wayne Casey, it's the first. They consider him the best defensive guard on this Kentucky squad, a very deep squad indeed. 33 seconds to go, 42 to 32, 10 point lead. And a full court press for the first time, trap press by Kentucky, but bringing it across is the freshman. And the jump shot by Williams is good. 42 to 34 with 22 seconds to go. Hanslick tries to trap. Wayne Casey brings it across, and they break it. LeVon Williams goes up. Traveling call against LeVon Williams. And 16 seconds remaining in the first half, and eight-point lead. Notre Dame 
likely to play for that last shot. They'll bring in Lambeer first, though. Big play right there, Al. Don't you think that uh, Joe Hall would have loved to have that possession going into the halftime? Yeah, that would have put him at double digits. Now it's uh, if uh, Digger can get the guy to make the shot, one of the fellas, that uh, they'll go in six down and be in a beautiful position for the second half. It's a big basket right here. Buddy. It sure was. Very interesting how just one possession can alter things going into a halftime. Branding finds Hanslick wide open as Williams in the corner, deflected by Macy. We have five seconds to go. Williams is going to take the shot from the corner, and it's no good. The buzzer sounds, and that ends activities in the first half. Kentucky has dominated this first half, but they haven't been able to run away from the Fighting Irish, ranked fourth in the country. And at the end of the first half, the score, Kentucky 42, Notre Dame 34. Well, the training's rough, you know, the sergeant's tough. Now it's all behind, got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. More and more lately, I find I've got taste for living. I'm thinking cold blue ribbon. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. Naturally good paps, a lot to look forward to. Today, millions of people are protecting their cars like a trooper with Texaco's Haviland Super Premium Motor Oil, tested in more than 90 state trooper cars for over 4 million miles. Of the engines inspected, there were no signs of unusual wear. And remember, with Haviland's formulation, you don't have to buy any extra motor oil additives. It provides all the protection a car's engine needs. Get Haviland Super Premium and protect your car like a trooper. Hello, National. I need a car tomorrow in Dallas. My green light number is 28517. I make your reservation. This minute's all it takes. I wash the car. I check the oil. I test the tires and brakes. I make sure that they are all completely up to par. I hand you the keys to a General Motors car. At Photomat, we have this policy. If for any reason you're not tickled with any print we develop, we'll buy it back on the spot in cash. Take up to a month to mull it over and don't forget your receipt. Get refund. Pull it. Up it. Up out. Hey! After all, we're Photomat, and all we do is everything you need for taking good pictures. Stay with us at halftime. Al McGuire and Billy Packer will discuss the first half. We'll have a special film feature as well as Kentucky leads Notre Dame 42 to 34. Givens the high score with 16 points for Kentucky. Trapuca, Hanslick, and Duck Williams all with eight points for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. So here at halftime at Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the Wildcats of Kentucky undefeated at 7-0 this year, and they're trying to get a little bit farther than they did last year in the NCAA playoffs. And we'll be back with the ProCats College Basketball Report after these messages. Can we take this ball? No, baby. Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> Joanne Woodward. Don't get sick again. Carrie Fisher of Star Wars and Jay Benedict. A new TV production of Come Back Little Sheba. Tonight at 9, 8 Central, right after the King Orange Jamboree Parade. At the Long Acre Theater, live on stage, the way Jesus Christ Superstar should be experienced. The present limited engagement has been extended to February 12th, so everyone can enjoy a musical and spiritual experience you'll never forget. Tickets now at the Long Acre Theater box office and all ticket run outlets. In 1928, $1,600 got this man a college education. It cost his granddaughter $16,000. It may cost $40,000 when they're ready. Will you have to be rich to send them? Not if you have the Bowery's new college education plan. It gives you a cram course in future college costs and tells how the Bowery can help you solve this financial problem. Get your free copy of the Bowery's education plan so you can educate yourself about educating your children. Hey, heard about the new Hall of Reptiles and Amphibians at the Museum of Natural History? Huh? Does that mean yes? Championship Tennis with Rosewall and Alexander, Sunday at 12.30.
college basketball report is brought to you by pro Ked. for all those moments you feel like a pro Al with a score 42 34 that's an eight point margin anybody who can add or subtract knows something about that but that one possession really meant an awful lot in regard to what goes on at halftime well if kentucky would have come in 10 up i think that they could have went immediately to the one three one zone and if notre dame would have come in six down that they would have had more confidence. The, the double-digit number is a dangerous one going into the halftime. I, I think uh, Kentucky um, is a powerful, powerful ball club, and Gibbons, no one can tell. about him, you know, he scores statistically, and you don't realize he's having such a big day. You look up there at halftime, he's got 16 or 18 points and hasn't forced a shot yet. Well, it looks like Notre Dame is setting up all their defense to stop him. Roby has very, very impressed me, and I also think that um, they deserve the number one rating. I, I feel that uh, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be down to the wire. Notre Dame has a tendency when they play against number one in any sport, they seem to arise to the occasion. I think maybe it's Pat O'Brien in the late movie, The Gipper, you know, walking across Notre Dame <laughs> campus. Well, you know, we're going to have, we've seen some great basketball out here, and we're going to have New Year's Eve coming up, and there's a, there's a lot of things that happen in a basketball game that causes that coach maybe to have a little gray hairs every once in a while. Let's take a look at some of them. Big Hank going the wrong way or the other way. That's the guy starring right now, Mitch Kupchak. He did a lot of plays that were a lot better than that when he was at North Carolina. Well, I think a lot of these fellows look for Emmys. They, uh, <laughs> you'll notice a lot in the, in the shots, though, that they, they're looking for the foul more than they're looking for the basket. They start reaching in too soon, they lose their balance. But this is what college ball is all about. The mistakes make college ball. Yeah, if everybody was perfect, you wouldn't need him out there. That's one of your old guys going in there. Yeah, that's BT, an odd tune. He will be a super one next year. You know, it's, it's such a ballet basketball that you, uh, uh, you don't realize how gifted these athletes are. They're punting more than they are putting it up in the hoop right now. There goes, there goes a guy playing well, Custer. There up, you go. Up, up. Need a Brian. Hope you don't see that. <laughs> Tripping over the, uh, the stripes. Washington of course, safe at second. There's Phil Ford. He's a great one. He'll make a lot of plays better than that one. Yeah, he makes the four corners, though. You huh? get that guy a scholarship just to knock the ball out of the basket when he gets stuck. say it's not a contact sport. Well, we're seeing that out there today. It's just incredible. <laughs> Somebody busted it off. Looks like Bill Chamberlain was around. Looks like a shell of a coconut at that point. Steel Marie Steel. Technical up. Well, there's one of those mild mannered guys that would go for the discus. I don't know who he is. This is my own McGantry routine. <laughs> I was really that obnoxious. <laughs> I think you were, yeah, I really do. But now we have to put up with some other guys. Look at Hank, he doesn't even believe you. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, it was a nice run. I, I really enjoyed my 13 years, and I, I'll tell this, any official I've ever worked with, I, uh, I've never thought they were dishonest. I just did my thing, and they did theirs. That's right. We'll continue with Pro Cad's basketball report in just a moment. Pro Kids would like you to know there's a movement afoot. It looks so easy on TV, but it won't come that easily. Ball just doesn't seem to bounce your way. Usually, you're all thumbs, but sometimes that magic comes. Look at you, you've made the perfect play.
America is moving to Pro Kids because Pro Kids are built to run, leap, cut, jump, and drive comfortably and as fast as humanly possible. And that's what the Pro Kids movement is all about. Pro Kids for all those moments you feel. Al, you had so many days on the bench where you go through a ball game like today where everybody is battling and battling, and you're a coach, you have to battle on the sidelines too. Uh, we've got a guy like Digger Phelps, he's battling out there all day. Well, Digger is one of the best, and I, I feel that he reacts to the crowd, and he does his thing to counter the crowd and to counter the subconscious of the officials. But, you know, he started this ball game with the referees, uh, talking to the referees before the game even got off the ground. Here we have a, a few looks at him during that first half. That's what it makes it all worthwhile, though. He is an outstanding basketball coach, and let's talk about it now. We've got a second half coming up, Al, that should be really outstanding. I was surprised to see Kentucky, when they did go to the zone and had that work in margin early, to go out of it and then get back into man-to-man. -man. I think what happens today with coaches, the multiple defenses to try to throw you off as you make substitutions. Digger made a substitution, moved in Flowers, and uh, Kentucky pulled out of their 1-3-1. I think they wanted to go back to it, but Notre Dame spread it about four points then. I feel the second half here, if they get up 10 points, they'll sit in that 1-3-1. Notre Dame's guards are not that tall. They cannot make the penetrating pass from the guard position to the forward position. And uh, most zones are passive, as I said earlier. They allow you to work around the perimeter, but the 1-3-1 does not. I think you'll see Digger put two tall men, that's why he moved Flowers in, I thought at that time, to put two tall men and split that guard that's playing beneath the basket and throw an alley-oop pass in there. How about from the standpoint of, of Notre Dame offensively trying to be a little bit more patient to look for the openings rather than put it up so quickly? Uh, I personally think they should because they're a methodical type club and they, they like to just screen down and screen up and uh, wear you down. I think one of the big problems here, they're missing their sixth man, the student body. This is not a neutral court that's by the furthest stretch of the imagination. And how about the referees in this ball game? Uh, let's give them some credit. It's a very physical game by some physical players out there. I think they're doing a fine job. I think they're doing an impossible job. I don't think anyone but God can referee a game like this because there's so much, uh, the, everyone's so big and they're taking up so much space. This is one reason maybe there should be three officials. I've been against it for years, but a game like this, you'd say, well, maybe we do need a third one out there. Well, it's been a tough ball game, and we'll return to Freedom Hall in Louisville after these messages from your local station. You're invited to a gala New Year's Eve celebration, starting with the King Orange Jamboree Parade, a colorful, festive event complete with floats, marching band, and many holiday surprises. Join Joe Garagiola and Oscar Emmy and Tony Award winner Rita Marino. Tonight at 8, 7 Central Time, followed by a new TV production of Comeback Little Sheba. Hey, Mal, what are you putting in a swimming pool? Yep. Always wanted to put a pool in our backyard, Howard. Yeah, and your backyard is right next to our backyard. Yeah. Hey, Audrey, uh, the Barnetts are putting in a pool. A pool? Hey, kids, the Barnetts are putting in a swimming pool. Brought to you by Pabst. Naturally good since 1844. Pabst, a lot to look forward to. By Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products that you can trust. And by Lincoln Mercury Division, who invites you to see the dazzling Diamond Jubilee collection of 1978 cars and the new Mercury Zephyr Z7, born to challenge. Kentucky leads Notre Dame 42-34 at Freedom Hall in Louisville in today's college basketball game, and will return with the second half tip-off in just a moment. You're the one, you quarter pounder people. My dad's a policeman. My dad's a fireman. Oh, yeah, well, my dad's a quarter pounder person. You, you're the one, you quarter pounder people. Okay, Johnny, that's a hundred and two and a quarter pounds. Where'd you pick up that? Ah, McDonald's Quarter Pounder and Quarter Pounder with Cheese. A big quarter pound of juicy, lean, 100% beef on a sesame seed bun. A 
quarter pounder person knows there's just one quarter pounder and just one place to get one. A quarter pounder person has a smile a mile around. There's lots of quarter pounder people. Just one place they can be found. You know how I first knew I was a quarter pounder person? <laughs> Every day at 12 o'clock, I turned into a McDonald's. <laughs> at McDonald's, we do it all for you. Should you own a Mercury Marquee? Listen to some former Buick and Olds owners on the phone. More of them switched to Marquee last year than the year before. It really looks like a luxury car. The right engineered 78 Marquee has more hip room than Buick or Olds. I can seat six people comfortably. And more luggage room. It has tremendous trunk space. Call this number toll free. Let some of these former Buick and Olds owners give you reasons why you should consider the 1978 Marquee. <laughs> A look at the halftime scoring with Hanslick, the surprise starter at forward. Tropuka, the freshman. Williams with eight points. Notice that Hanslick and Batten each with three personal fouls in the game. And for the Kentucky Wildcats, Jack Givens, the fifth all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history, has 16 points, followed by Kyle Macy with eight. Roby has six. Phillips, Alexinas have three personal fouls each. I think it's very interesting there that... Givens coming through with 16 points, a very silent type ball player, but a great outstanding ball player. Rick Roby having a good half and doesn't have a foul committed on him. That's very unusual. Well, the Kentucky Wildcats uh, will go into the SEC, and they're expected to win the Southeast Conference Championship. And Notre Dame really has a brutal schedule. They play what has to be the toughest schedule in the country as an independent all over the country. They sure do, Dick. Georgia game in here the other night. Louisville plays a pretty tough schedule themselves, but Georgia club look very good. They may have some moves they want to make in that Southeastern Conference. That's a real fine league. Tough competition. Well, you saw the turnovers. Here's a look at the rebounds in the first half of this ball game with an eight-point lead for Kentucky. Their biggest lead, 12 points. Starting the second half for Kentucky. It'll be Rick Roby, 53. Jack Givens, 21. The forwards, Mike Phillips, number 55, the center. In the backcourt, number four, Kyle Macy. And 22, Truman Clater. Coming out for Notre Dame. 45, Dave Batten. 32, Orlando Woolridge. Number 42, Bill Hanslick. And in the backcourt, Rich Branning, number 12. And Don Williams, number 25. You're looking at the Wildcat, the Kentucky mascot. This is Bluegrass Country. And Kentucky has a tremendous basketball tradition. 42 to 34. Dale Kelly of the SEC will toss it up, and we're underway for the second half. Dick Stockton, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire hope you're enjoying this game on New Year's Eve on NBC. Rick Roby hits from the baseline. Eight points for Roby. Kentucky up by 10. And Phillips back into the ballgame starting his second half. Look for him to go to him early. Patton goes inside, has an opening, the ball knocked away, and it was last touched by a Kentucky player. And immediately Digger Phelps comes in with Bill Lambeer at center replacing Woolridge. Well, the obvious reason for that is Woolridge is his best leaper. He wanted him for the tap in the second half, and uh, it wasn't very successful because Roby got it, but a good move by Digger. Always thinking. Patton gives up the dribble. Branding looking inside to Lambeer. Overplaying him is Phillips. Lambeer hits the tough shot. 44-36. to 36. Opening minutes here in the second half from Freedom Hall in Louisville. And Branning fouls in the backcourt. His second foul. And the first team foul, of course, in the second half. Later is guarded by Branning. Man-to-man -man defense used by Notre Dame here. Swinging around a Roby in the corner. A fake put on by Kyle Macy. This is the shot. Lambeer tries for the rebound. And Hanslick had it and lost it. Notre Dame lost it to Kentucky. Mike Phillips goes up with the shot as Batten and Roby tangle underneath. Fine rebound by Gibbons. And once again, this fella just does it all. Good pass on the inside. Phillips is going to go to the boards anytime he has that ball. There's Roby battling on the inside. This is a tough ball club to handle. Third foul on Don Williams. And Phillips is on the line. You know, Dickie, point out, too, if you're playing Kentucky and you're Notre Dame right now, and there is Mike Phillips. He's a mountain of a man, a real fine offensive performer. But if you're playing a team like this this early in the season and you have a figure you get a chance to play him again in the playoffs sometimes, you might not want to throw your full game plan at him. 
And uh, I, I think that's one of the things Tigger has in the back of his mind. That's a good point, because unless these teams are in the same regional, and they were uh, last year, they could be in the Final Four. What a pass good from play. Randing to Williams. Uh-oh. Williams has injured his right knee as he hit the floor. Before he went up for that shot, we saw perhaps one of the best bounce passes in a crowd we've seen any time. I think what happened to Duck here is that you'll see the play right here you're talking about. Excellent backdoor move. Even though Clater did a job, Phillips was really out of position. He should have been in the way there to do the job on that, but he wasn't. And there's the knee. Came right down. Here you come. You'll see it right there. Knee on knee. And that's where the injury took place. Roby hitting Duck Phillips right on the knee. I think Duck will be all right. I don't think he's strained anything. Matter of fact, I believe he's going to stay right in the ball game. But they're going to have to call a timeout or take him out one. So Duck's going to come out. Another, of another of the long line of Washington, D.C. products going to Notre Dame. He went to Mackin High School, the same school that produced Austin Carr. So Williams will sit down and Stan Wilcox, number 24, a freshman guard from North Babylon, New York, is in 46 to 38, opening minutes. Here's the matchup zone being played by Notre Dame now, but Macy recognizes well and goes to the corner. Roby fights to keep it in. He cannot do it. And it's Notre Dame ball. Macy had a wide open shot, and normally he'd hit that. He did. He felt it. He felt the zone right away. Went to the opposite corner. Had the shot, but didn't hit it. Kentucky won here a year ago, 102 to 78. They've dominated the series 25 to 14. As Batten tries to drive, and if you ever want padding and equipment in a basketball game, this would be the game. The way they're banging inside. That's the second time that Batten's been able to take Roby on the drive. Roby slides in. Good call by the official. Very good call right there. Rick Roby's first foul. Dave's putting it on the floor, going pretty well with it. Hansley looks to Batten. He's free. Let's go with the jump shot. And Macy had it, lost it. Inside Hanslick, good second effort, but he throws up an air ball, and with the rebound is Gibbons, and Notre Dame... A little bit too over-aggressive, and Hanslick has committed his fourth personal foul. One more, and he's gone. Al, don't you think that that might have been a time where you want possession of the ball rather than just a wild shot? Well, you know what's happening? Very rare does a championship team play man-to-man -man out of bounds on, under their own basket. Kentucky's playing man-to-man, -man, which is, uh, I'm surprised Notre Dame hasn't come up with a few layups. Let's watch it next time. Ruben Clater gets it inside Gibbons. Doesn't go for him, but Macy is out there. Gibbons goes baseline. Hanslick stops him. Roby with a screen from Gibbons. Batted around, and Batten has it after Phillips contended. Here comes Wilcox, the freshman. Macy stops his momentum. Batten in the corner. Hanslick. Kentucky with a tough defense, but Macy fouls Branding driving in. First foul on Kyle Macy in the ball game. 46 to 38 to score in favor of Kentucky. Digger liked the rotation his team got into that time. They really had good movement on the part of all the players. Hands are going to sit down for a while. Al McGuire coming. And, uh, Williams, he, you leave him sit out this long. Leave the Ducks sit out this long. He's going to tighten up. So I'm a little afraid maybe that, that knee might be a little bit worse than you think. you got to have Williams in there. He's a streaky shooter. He's their leader. He's their captain. They're in trouble if he doesn't get back in. He's got a nice back on. We ought to point out over there, Deck, and... Uh, Maybe he is in a little more pain. It looked like it was just one of those things where you hit knee on knee. Tracy Jackson, number 30, in for Notre Dame. He's a senior, a freshman forward. And for Kentucky, they brought in James Lee, number 32. Branding, a good free throw shooter, having trouble at the line. 46 to 39, 17-35 remaining second half. Inside they go to Phillips. He's short, and the rebound is Batten. He gets it out. And Branding into the corner. Lambeer hits it outside. Line drive shot by Bill Lambeer, the 6'11 senior, and he has six points. The sophomore here. That's one of those shots you hope they don't take, and after they make it, you have to say nice one. 46-41. Matchup zone again by Notre Dame. Inside, turnaround, Phillips. And Notre Dame can cut it to three points with a basket here. Branding to Batten. Very poised freshman players Digger Phelps has. Patton rims the hoop. Phillips and now Macy has it. Lead pass given. Lost it. And a foul. It's against Kentucky and Givens has been slapped with his third personal foul. 
Al McGuire, you talked about the shot that you shouldn't take, but it goes in, and what can you say? And Al McGuire, of course, has had a lot of those. Well, I don't, I don't believe you should take that type of shot. Uh, Lambert hit it. It was a low trajectory shot. But in a 27-game season, you're going to end up in a minus pool. Five-point lead for Kentucky. Patton looking inside. Wilcox has to go in the corner to Lambeer. Will he try another outside shot? Jackson hemmed in by Gibbons. Kentucky with a tight man-to-man, -man, and they're going to call a foul against Wilcox. And these are these turnovers that really can kill you, Al. They, they sure do hurt, and Al, there's two occasions in a row where they never even got a chance to get a shot off because they're just bad thinking in their car. Well, it, it's uh, Notre Dame's coming along good. I, the only thing that scares me is Williams sitting out so long. I Also, if he gets another foul, maybe that Dick is thinking that way. He has three on him, the fourth one. I never saved the ball player after the fourth foul because I thought they used the cat and mouse and they knew more about it than you did. Don Williams apparently is all right because when we come back, he will enter the game for Notre Dame. 46-41 Kentucky in a close one. <laughs> It's going to be a little short, about 70 miles. This is Bob for Texaco Hope in the Gulf of Mexico. This water is 260 feet deep. It can cost up to six times more to drill for oil out here than on land. But we've got to do this if America is to become less dependent on unreliable sources of oil from abroad. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. One tonight, but it was quite a fight. Now it's all behind. Got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got Pat's blue ribbon on my mind. More and more lately, I find I've got a taste for living. I'm thinking cold blue ribbon. I've got Pat's blue ribbon on my mind. Naturally good Pat's. A lot to look forward to. Call it. An officer fights to regain his honor in the most spectacular movie ever made for TV. Both bitches, Robert Powell, Simon Ward, Jane Seymour, star in The Four Feathers. Tomorrow at 9, 8 Central. Well, never forget that. That was in Jersey on the Channel Islands, and the event was World Tug of War, one of the many fine and interesting and unusual events you will see on a great program premiering Sunday, January 22nd, Sports World. Entertainment for the entire family, Olympic-type events, and leading up to the 1980 Games. Sports World on NBC, January 22nd. 46-41 to 41 the score in favor of Kentucky. James Lee loops it in to Roby. Not a good pass, but Roby recovered well. And Macy gets it out to Clater, top of the key. That's a man to man. Notre Dame foul is on Rich Branning, and that is his third personal foul. Hanslick has four for Notre Dame, and he is the only player with four now fouls. Notre Dame, Kentucky has hit only one of eight shots in the second half. Notre Dame three for six, and that's narrowed the gap a bit. You know, Dick, and I think the reason for that is Digger has changed up his defenses very well, and Kentucky's come down and taken a shot before they really recognize what Notre Dame was doing. Later, a pure shooter from Toledo, Ohio, makes both free throws, and it's 48-41 to 41 Kentucky with 16 minutes remaining in the game. Rich Branning from Huntington Beach, California. Duck Williams back in the game after injuring the knee momentarily. And Tracy Jackson throws it up. And a foul called on Lee inside. James Lee, and that's his fourth personal foul. 240 pounds and a bruiser coming off the bench. But Pat did a good job holding his ground right there to, in order to draw that foul. And now we'll see that out-of-bounds situation that Al was talking about. Man-to-man -man all the way to Kentucky. Batten is wide open right of the key. 48 to 43, Kentucky. And we'll have to adjust. Al McGuire. You, you can't play man-to-man uh, -man against a team taking the ball out under, your, under their own basket. It's, uh, it should be a zone. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Notre Dame didn't get three or four more baskets on that. And Notre Dame back in a little bit of zone situation. They're matching up well now. This is really a chess game going on between these two coaches. We get it inside to Alex Sinas, the freshman. This is but Gibbons is there with a follow-up. Jack Gibbons with a follow-up shot, and Goose has 18 points. The game high scorer, 50 to 43, Kentucky with 15-20 to go. Williams, the high scorer for Notre Dame, throws up a wild shot, but Lambeer saves it. 
He'll lay up here, and they get the two right back, and the pace quickens here in the second half. Good rebounding by both Lambeer and Bat. They're doing a the job on the boards. Gibbons gets it out to Truman Clater. Zone defense by Notre Dame. Alex Sinus is inside. They'll try to look in there. Deflected, knocked away by Williams. Three on two break for Notre Dame. Williams doesn't see it, slows it in the corner. Smart play. Smart play. All over Jackson is Gibbons. And here's Batten. Roby trying to stay with Batten on a weave. Tracy Jackson will puts it up. And Gibbons is going to be hit with his fourth personal foul. And that could be a big factor in this game. We'll see right here. There's Goose Gibbons, an outstanding player. But he's one guy that Joe Hall does not want to have on the bench. Here's the play inside. Alex Sinus going up. Good defense there by Lambert. And there's Goose Gibbons. Nobody blocking him out. Tracy Jackson out of position there. That'll hurt you every time. And LeVon Williams will quickly replace Gibbons in the lineup. What does Al McGuire have to say? Uh, I think when you're playing at home, you, you go with the fourth foul and let the chips fall where they may. All right, Al, let's see if... A lot of times, and you're right, coaches will not use a, a player with four fouls, and all of a sudden you'll find yourself behind and you're having, having lost your momentum. You, say, you save a man after three fouls, not after four. Four's too late. Of course, Joe Hall's got 14 minutes to go, and he needs Gibbons in there. Missed free throw. Roby grabbed the rebound. Somebody might have been in the lane, and the free throw doesn't count, though. So it's a foul. They call a foul on Lambeer. Team fouls right now show Notre Dame with six and Kentucky with five. One more for Notre Dame, and Kentucky will shoot the bonus. 14 and a half minutes to go, second half, 50 to 46. Now with Kyle Macy from the corner, makes it 52 to 46, the Wildcats, and Macy has 10 points. Gibbons with 18, Macy with 10 and double figures for Kentucky Williams with 10 points, leading Notre Dame scoring. Jackson to bat, Roby out to meet him. Branning, now Jackson, Williams to not shoot him. Tough man-to-man, -man. Kentucky playing their best man-to-man -man of the game as Batten misses outside. Alex Sinus, the freshman rebound. Kyle Macy. He's the floor general, Bill. He is. He's a real solid ball player. He recognizes defenses, settles his club down, tries to get him to get good shots. Like that one. His second foul, LaVon Williams, and now each side has 16 fouls, so we'll probably have both in the bonus before long. Well, we'll see the foul, but that's a good shot. You want to set your team up for shots like that. It just didn't go, but boy, Batten and Lambeer doing a great job on the board. Notre Dame hanging in on this road game. Al McGuire, quick comment. I disagree with Billy. I don't think that was a good shot. All right. Uh, Time out. 52 to 46. Nothing wrong with a little disagreement between two basketball minds. It took on our tough test tracks. Now it'll take on the world. Introducing Zephyr Z7 from Lincoln Mercury. Born to challenge the competition with rack and pinion steering, wide mount strut suspension, front discs. And Z7 is energy engineered for space and mileage with a very competitive price. New Zephyr Z7, born to challenge. Goodyear Tiempo, a new tire for all weather conditions. The Goodyear Tiempo, a breakthrough in steel belted radios. You can drive a Goodyear Tiempo through an Arizona summer, through a winter in Wisconsin, and a springtime rain in Georgia, an autumn in Vermont. You can drive a Goodyear Tiempo whenever, wherever you want. Tiempo with a protective sidewall scuff bar from $39. Keep it on season after season. NBC in association with TVS in the best in college basketball. Regional play next week, Minnesota-Michigan in Big Ten play. Alabama hosting Mississippi State, Colorado at Iowa State, Houston at National Power, Arkansas, St. Bonaventure at Virginia Tech, Holy Cross. They're trying to rebound after their tough time at New York's Holiday Festival. They play at Army and UCLA at Washington. That starts at 3 o'clock. The rest of the game starts 2 o'clock Eastern time as UCLA begins their quest for another Pac-8 title. And don't forget, January 15th, the big doubleheader on NBC, Nevada-Las Vegas against Marquette, followed by UCLA and the USSR. 52-46, Kentucky oh. leading. Off 
at the rim, trying to save it, going out of bounds is Williams. Valiant play by the Ducks. That was a good play inside. Lambert just didn't get the handle on it properly to put it up, but real good ball handling by Notre Dame. 13 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the ball game. Six-point lead, biggest lead in the game for Kentucky was 12. And a turnover intercepted by Flowers on a bad pass. Flowers to Williams. Williams goes to the basket. Good pass back to Flowers. A fake, and the shot goes up, and a foul call. Notre Dame off the bench on mass. They claim that it should be goaltending, but it will be a foul and a two-shot foul with Roby committing his second. Al McGuire, a comment. You can you can call that goaltending. The man was fouled. It was a possible three-point play. If the ball went in, it would have been a, a three-point play. So it should have been called goaltending. From my view. Bruce Flowers with one point in the game, coming into the contest, averaging five a contest, on the line shooting two. I think Notre Dame has adjusted very well to the crowd and the tempo of the game in the second half, much more so than they did the first half, and they're starting to get into their offense now, get a better shot. Flowers makes one of two, 52 to 47. Five point Kentucky lead, they led by eight at the half. Kyle Macy, ball handling against Williams. Pass into LeVon, Williams goes up, short. Coming out of the pack is Flowers with a pass to Williams. He'll slow it in the corner. Notre Dame playing much more disciplined now as Kyle Macy commits a foul. Macy's second foul, and it'll be one and one at the line. Notre Dame seems to... Gained a lot of poise in the second half, doing the right things and not rushing too much. I have to agree with you. That's a pretty experienced backcourt as far as being in tough situation. Although Burning's just a sophomore, he has a lot of poise, a real good floor general out there. And, of course, Duck's been around for a long time. Best free throw shooter for the Irish. Gets it through. Notre Dame 12 for 17 from the line. Kentucky has missed only one in 17 attempts. Joe Hall probably thinking very seriously now about going back to that original starting lineup and trying to get his team back in with a working margin. Well, he's got to be thinking of something because the Fighting Irish have narrowed the Kentucky lead to three with 12.40 to go, 52 to 49. Roby to the top to Scheidler, 25. Inside is Alex Sinas, 50. LeVon Williams, 52. And Roby, 53. Scheidler finds a, and a pass from Macy to Roby. What a pass from Kyle Macy. And give Joe Hall credit for that. He put him in a new offense against the matchup zone. That's the first time they used it today. Macy is great pass inside. Roby has 10 points. And a lot of banging going on in that floor. Gracie Jackson gets it out, deflected by Scheidler, but Williams keeps it in. The forecourt for Notre Dame, 54-49, Kentucky. Jackson, watched by LeVon Williams. Branning, jump shot, it's good, and Branning, and we will have a foul away from the basket. On Kentucky, I believe, the basket will count. It might be on no, Lambeer. No, it is not on Lambeer, and Digger Phelps is up in arms again. Third foul on Lambeer, but the basket counts by Branny. Al, you mentioned before the game started how the coaches will try to get on the referee in a split crew. There was a case of Digger talking to the fella, supposedly representing his side, saying, hey, help me, help me. <laughs> you know what? This is a great college basketball game, and the young guys out there playing at 100% of their maximum, and both schools can be proud of themselves. Two national powers, as we said at the outset, depending on what regional they're going to be placed in at the end of the year. You could see them in the NCAA Final Four, maybe the Final Two on NBC in March. Strong basketball team. Roby hits two free throws, 56-51, 12 points for Rick. Under 12 minutes remaining in the game. Notre Dame had a very relaxed practice here after working out at South Bend before they arrived yesterday. Flowers outside. They're passing it on the perimeter right now. Lambeer, the big guy, comes out. Right, they're using an open offense, trying to clear up that middle a little bit, looking for somebody for some penetration, as opposed to having a guy right in the center position. Alex Cetus is really overplaying Lambeer, is trying to spin around, and we'll have a foul called on Kentucky, and that'll be Williams. Third foul on LeVon Williams. Keep in mind that Jack Gibbons, the leading scorer in the game with 18 points, has been on the Kentucky bench with four personal fouls. His uh, substitute, Williams, has three. 
Both sides have been over the limit. There you see Givens, 6'4", senior from Lexington, and another in a long line of All-Americans. And you see Lee and Truman Plater. And Lee's got four. Now, normally with Givens out of there, Lee'd be in, but with four fouls, of course, Joe Hall doesn't want to use him at all. Gracie Jackson from Silver Spring, Maryland. A freshman at 6'5", seeing considerable playing time today. And he's done a fine job handling the ball since he's been in there. This is the second free throw. Flower shot. And Alex Sinas fights for the loose ball. And Ruby gets it to Kyle. Kyle Macy, that is. 56-52. A wild game. They're playing this like it's for all the marbles. They sure are. LeVon Williams inside and try to get it to Alex Sinas and Duck Williams will try to beat the crowd and close it up. Lambeer comes up court. 10.55 remaining. It's 56 to 52 Kentucky. Flowers looking for help. Jackson on a weave outside. A bomb. Top of the key by Williams. Jackson will win the fight for the rebound. And the Irish maintain possession. Very poised freshman is Tracy Jackson. He's really doing a good job. They loop it to Lambeer, out to an open Williams. He's tough, he hits. 12 points for Doug Williams. It's 56-54, to 54, and this is the closest Notre Dame has come since the first eight minutes of this ballgame. I'm sure Joe Hall's thinking timeout on the next possession because he's thinking about it right now. At one point, Kentucky had a 12-point lead, and they'll talk it over because Notre Dame has come back strong in the second half before a packed house at Freedom Hall. 10-17 remain in the ballgame, 56-54, the Wildcats. Bob Hope on the bridge of a Texaco supertanker, fogbound near Milford Haven, Wales. But watch. No, it's not magic. It's a tanker simulator on dry land in New York. Almost anything we confront at sea can be recreated here by computer. It's all part of Texaco's ongoing tanker training program. That makes sure our experienced officers continue to keep their tankers in our seas ship shape. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Company! Well, the training's rough, you know, the sergeant's tough. Now it's all behind, got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. More and more lately, I find I've got a taste for living. I'm thinking cold blue ribbon. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. Naturally good paps, a lot to look forward to. On Black Sheep Squadron, Pappy Boyington gets a new boss, and the squadron is in trouble. Robert Conrad stars Wednesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain Time on NBC. Well, we wonder what Joe Hall told his Kentucky team with the lead down to two, but they have a guy on the bench, Jack Gibbons, who they need very much, Al McGuire. Well, uh, I don't want to second-guess Coach Hall, but Gibbons' sweat has now dried, and when he gets back into the game, it's going to take him about a minute to get the sweat going again. And the tendency in that type of a thing is to commit a foul when you're trying to get going. But uh, I wouldn't second guess Coach Hall. He's an outstanding coach, and, but this is the way I would have done it. What do you think, Bill? I think uh, the first move he's going to make, and as he did, he put James Lee back into the game, hope that Lee can give a couple of minutes a good, solid, mature play, and then bring Givens back into the game. He's got a lot of depth on that team. Turnovers, turnovers are even, rebounds are even, and the game practically even right now. 56-54, winding down to the halfway mark in the second half. Scheidler, 25. Kyle Macy, number four. I'll tell you, that matchup zone has really played well in the last six or seven minutes of this game. Scheidler can hit from outside. Not this time, but Macy picks up the ball. Scheidler will start it again. High post is Alex Sinas, number 50. Lee, 32, playing with four fouls. And Alex Sinas, basket is good by... Freshman. Boy, here's where power means so much. Good pass inside. Alexinus makes a good move. Goes up. Even though he has a man on his arm, and the man he had on his arm was Kelly Tapuka, who weighs about 220 himself, he still went up and goes for the three-pointer. Foul is on Lambeer. That's his fourth. So we have Lambeer and Hanslick with four fouls for Notre Dame. Givens and Lee, four fouls for Kentucky. Tapuka probably could have put his hand on quickly there and had the foul on him because it was just as much his foul as Lambert and would have helped Notre Dame if it had been on him. We'll see a lot of that freshman Chuck Alexinas before he's through at UK. Branny in the backcourt, number 12 with Williams, 25. Tapuka, 44. And they'll call the foul on Kyle Macy. He 
got knocked to the floor, and the foul is against Casey. Lambeer leads the ball game. And coming in now is Bruce Flowers, number 34. So we have Batten, 45. Flowers, you see there, 34. And Trapuca, 44, the front court for the Irish. And in the backcourt, Williams, 25. And Branding on the line, number 12. Kentucky with Macy, Scheidler, Lee, Alexinas, and Roby. Branding with nine points now. 59-55, now it's 59-56, with nine and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. What a contest on New Year's Eve, Billy. And it certainly is, but without Gibbons in the ballgame, you don't have that third outside shooter that Kentucky would like to have in there. Lee's more of an inside player. Macy goes baseline, Seidler outside. This is the shot. Kentucky was effective when they were working the ball in. They've been trying to hit from outside lately. Flowers gets in there and... It's the bucket, and it's a one-point Kentucky lead, 59 to 58. Kentucky's working it in, while Ken or Notre Dame is, while Kentucky is shooting perimeter. That's right, and they only have uh, perimeter shooting from the guard position. Need that forward shooter in there right now. Gibbons remains on the bench, and that's the story of this contest. Macy pulls it out, does a good job trying to get his team under control. Roby inside, no good. Trapuca clears the board. Notre Dame unquestionably has the momentum at this point with 8.35 to go. They trail by one, can take the lead. Trapuca throws it up, and the foul is against Kentucky. Jay Seidler, and a... Well, let's hear from Al McGuire first. If, if Digger Phelps gets the lead here, I, I, I would say he'll go to delay. He won't go to complete freeze, but delay is where you just go for the 90% uh, shot. You try to get the other team the foul and keep more fouling. So if they get the lead and Kentucky doesn't score going down, I would be surprised if he didn't do that. Technical, a technical foul was called as well on Scheidler, and Trapuca will shoot it. And more and more, Billy, and now we're seeing how much timing on the part of the coaches' decisions is going to play the role in who wins this game. A good call, and the assistant part in regard to the foul. And of course, Steidler, after the foul, he kind of made him a, a move, and that's what cost him the technical. Notre Dame has the lead 60 to 59, and Jack Gibbons will come back in the ball game with 8.31 to play. Trabuca makes everything, and a two point Notre Dame lead. Gibbons is in, and as will. Remember what Al McGuire said about the fact that he's now got to work himself in again and work that sweat up again, and he's got 8.31 to play. Leading scorer with 18 points. Kentucky's missed one free throw, Notre Dame six. Another thing this point spread does, it takes Kentucky out of their zone defense opportunity. Gibbons knocked the ball away, and it's still Notre Dame ball. The Irish down by 12 in the first half, leading now 61 to 59. Al McGuire. See if they take Goose Gibbons on a one-on-one -on, -one on the side to try to uh, commit the fifth foul on him. He's handling Trabuca, Al, so it would be a good opportunity to do that. Lauer's offensive foul is third. Big turn over there. Kentucky needs a bucket to tie the ball game. They are undefeated in seven games. They have gone over the 100-point mark on four occasions. Won't happen today, though. <laughs> Look for Goose Gibbons to be the man when they come back out on the floor to try and get some shots from the side. We should have one whale of a final 8-16 in this ball game. Notre Dame is way back. They've taken the lead by two points, 61-59. to Don't go away. Gerald Uprimian has more power than Dave Casper. More power? Him? I have new Red Guard Power Pump antiperspirant. So, I got banned basic. For most people, Dave, Red Guard's formula has uh, more power. <laughs> For some, up to twice as much. Power against wetness? Mm -hmm. What's more, you can spray uh, twice as much fan basic and still not match the power of Red Guard. New Red Guard Power Pump. Don't get dressed without it. <laughs> Hi, do you have a Gillette Track 2 blade I could borrow? No, but you can use my injector. Uh-uh, it doesn't shape close enough. Thanks. To guys who use a twin blade Gillette Track 2, no single blade will do. How about this double edge? Nah, it irritates me. No injector, no double edge, no single blade shaves you closer with less irritation than Gillette Track 2. Sure, I've got a Track 2, but I'm using it. <laughs> yeah, I'll wait. To guys who use a Gillette Track 2, no single blade will do.
tragic type events for the family, but a hard-hitting journalistic look each week on Sports World, a unique program premiering Sunday, January 22nd on NBC. Well, the Freedom Hall crowd with their blue and white pom-poms up here and standing as Kentucky needs a basket to tie it up with Notre Dame poised on the road coming back to take a lead. Scheidler in the backcourt with Macy. They've seen a lot of action, especially Their man-to-man deck in Kentucky. Of course, real smart move by Digger. Changed up on him right away. Kyle Macy ought to pull it back out and get back into their man-to-man -man offense. Givens outside. Flowers overplaying. Roby and the interception inside by Bat. The weak side forward came over to overplay and defended Roby inside. Give Digger Phelps uh, A for good thinking right there, changing up his defense. Batten inside, Brenning, and he's clobbered underneath. Kyle Macy has committed his fourth foul, and Notre Dame doing all the right things here. They sure are. Really a fine job out there. And Kyle Macy a little disgusted with himself because he got caught in a backdoor situation again. They've got a lot of people that they need in the ball game, they being Kentucky, that are in real serious foul trouble. Macy, Lee, and Gibbons all with four. And Branning, there it is the foul again. We'll see the good backdoor cut on the inside. Branning did it on the blind side. Macy really made a good block with a hand on the ball, but he was put, hit him with the body. And nine of 11 points by Branning comes from the free throw line, and he is the best free throw shooter. He misses again but he has made most of them. 62-59, Notre Dame, seven and a half minutes to play in the ball game. And a man-to-man -man defense by the Irish. Gibbons, 21 out to Scheidler, 25. Rebuca is on Gibbons, and he's caused in trouble. Yes, he is. And a wild pass, Wayne Casey in the game, picks it up in the backcourt, as Macy came out of the game with his fourth foul. Lee with a shot, he's hitting almost six has his first points of the ball game. Back to one point lead for the Irish. Notre Dame is gonna keep the tempo going. Uh, Al figured they might go with a little delay game, but it looks like they're going with it. And a give and go to Kelly Tribuca. A textbook play from the Naismith days, you might say. <laughs> Gives Notre Dame a three point lead. 6.42 remaining in the contest. 64-61, Notre Dame. Lee, he has four fouls. Scheidler in the corner. They try to get it to Lee inside, and Gibbons will shoot. Inside, Roby, follow up, it'll count, and a foul. Greg Roby was fouled inside, tough not to. Yes, this is a good play right here. There's Bruce Flowers, the fellow that committed the foul. Once you have a man with that kind of position, here you'll see Gibbons going up. Maybe a little cold, as Al pointed out. Roby with a good rebound. When he gets it inside, in this tight a situation, you're probably better off letting him have the two and not pick up that extra three-point play opportunity. Rick Roby with 14 points misses the free throw. Gibbons has 18, Roby 14, and Macy 10 for Kentucky. And Flowers foul was his fourth. 6.15 to go in the ball game. 64-63 Notre Dame by one. As Roby could have tied it up there. And the Irish have the lead. Williams out to Branding. And they're taking their time now. Yes, because Kentucky's in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Now, this is a time when you're behind that the other team can afford to bring the ball out, forcing you to come out and play and just pass on over that zone. If you're Notre Dame, hang on to it. Let the clock go. Good move. Six minutes to go now, and that's what they're doing. Al McGuire. Uh, Kentucky's going to have to come out man-to-man, -man, and then they can drift back into the zone later. But they, uh, they're letting the clock be eaten up. They're relatively playing at home. It's their advantage to create play. Now they're back to the man-to-man, -man, Al. They've got to put that yeah. pressure on. You're right. Sir. Early okay. in the game, Kentucky had the lead. They could afford to go to 1-3-1. One, one. Now Notre Dame late has a one-point lead, and they go back to the man-to-man. -man. Let's see what Notre Dame reacts. Williams brings it out again with five minutes and 20 seconds to go. One-point lead for Notre Dame, trying to pull an upset over the nation's top-ranked team. Well, this is a semi-delay game by Notre Dame, doing a real good job with it, too, and Kentucky's going to have to put more pressure on the ball. They're kind of standing there when a the man has the ball. You've got to force him to move with it. Flowers, top of the key in the Trapuca. 
Paducah with a short jumper, and Notre Dame used up a lot of time and came away with a two-point dividend as well. 66-63 to 63 with under five minutes to go. He is fundamentally so sound with the ball and on the offensive end of the court that he's going to be tough for anybody to handle. Wayne Casey is guarded by Williams. Gibbons will have to shoot inside. He does. And a fight with Roby and Batten, and they're going to jump it up. Great rebound. Super rebound inside. We'll see it right here now. Given still a little cold. He hadn't been able to get back into the swing. Look at this rebound right here. Roby going up there real well. Batten doing a good job also. Al McGuire has something to say. Notre Dame's delay will work mainly because Kentucky, the, the bulk, this is the one disadvantage of having strength and height is that they can't handle delays. You've got to bring, you're bringing the big men out to positions they're not used to playing defensive-wise. So I think you'll see Notre Dame get some chippy layups off it. Bill Lambeer back in the ball game. He's playing with four fouls, as many on the floor are. Kyle Macy with four fouls also back. Gibbons has missed several shots lately. Fight for the rebound, and Lambeer corrals it. A big rebound and a 66-63 lead with 4.24 to, to, that, uh, to go. And you can be sure the Irish against a man-to-man -man defense by Kentucky will take only the best percentage shot they can take. Williams outside the point guard here. Kaiser is going to have to really pick up defensively, put more pressure on Duck Williams. Williams is hit with an offensive foul. Very costly in his fourth. Kaiser actually was a little bit out of position on this screen, but he catches up and cuts down the angle that Duck had. Pretty good job by Lee. And there you see him drawing the foul, maybe a little acting job, but he got by with it. Al McGuire, I know you have something to say, but Mike Phillips has been on the bench a long time. Well, it, this is not his type of game. I think the end here where they, they've got to come out and pick up Notre Dame. I think the next shot that Gibbons takes, he'll hit. I feel by now he's starting to sweat through it. But you made a good point before because it's taken him four minutes for Gibbons really to get back in the swing of things. Still Kentucky ball, and now we have 3.51 to go in the game, and still Notre Dame by three. This is the timing that the coaches have to have or have a feel for. And here we see Notre Dame in an out-of-bounds situation. They'll be in a zone and stay with that zone, obviously, until the ball changes hands again. Truman Clater passes to Macy, a dead-eye shot outside. Kyle Macy has 12 points, 66-65, to 65, but Kentucky trails by one. 3.35 to go. The clock will become a, a factor here as we wind down to the final moment. Tribuca, watched by Gibbons. Lambeer outside to help. Remember, Gibbons has four on him. Tribuca tough offensively. Does not shoot. Instead goes to Duck Williams. Stop and shot. And traveling call against Williams. Step called against Duck Williams. And Kentucky will have an opportunity to take the lead, trailing 66 to 65, and a furious finish with three minutes and 10 seconds to go. Oh, big Tra steal. And Trapuca was claiming he knocked the ball off of Lee. But Dale Kelly of the SEC said, no, it's still Kentucky ball. You see the play right here. It's a pass down the sideline. Trapuca does a great job. Look at the hand he used his left hand on the inside, try to make the steal. Good call by the refs, and they're doing a whale of a job in what's a tough game to work. And a tough game, uh, a close game with Notre Dame hanging on by a thread. Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas, Alaska, a tough place to test car batteries, and that's why we took Motorcraft heavy-duty batteries to Alaska, testing them in 50 GM Chrysler and Ford cars and trucks. After six punishing months of Alaskan pipeline country, from cruel sub-zero winter to 90 degrees of summer, not one single battery failed. No matter what you drive, wherever you drive, ask for Motorcraft batteries from Ford. Tested tough in Alaska. So long. Ondecker, you may not have heard of it, but you will. Ondecker, you may not think a beer this expensive could be worth the extra money, but you will. Ondecker, costly ingredients, patient aging. You don't know what a difference that makes, but you will. Ondecker, the most expensive taste in beer. If you haven't tried it yet, you will. Catch all the action of the AFC Championship game as the Oakland Raiders take on the Denver Broncos. Coverage starts with NFL 77 tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern Time on NBC. Well, 
the physical condition of Denver quarterback Craig Morton uh, could be important tomorrow as Dick Enberg and Len Dawson bring you the big one, the AFC Championship game on NBC. Three minutes to go in the ball game. Kyle Macy drives the baseline, goes up and gets oh. the points to put Kentucky in front, 67 to 66. That was a big, big shot by Macy, and he did that against the matchup zone situation where he was able to penetrate even though there were other people inside. Wildcats 9 for 25 from the field in this half, and the zone defense by Kentucky. And in no hurry is Notre Dame, although Williams shoots from the corner, knocked away, Lambeer goes up. Krapuka will go up for a third try, and now Kentucky has it with two and a half minutes to go and leading by one point. Those are some good rebounds. Roby. Al McGuire. I thought, there's, I thought there's plenty of time left. Notre Dame rushed a little bit too quick then. The, the shot out of the corner by Duck Williams was not appropriate at this time. Man to man for Notre Dame. They have to be in it against Kentucky with a one-point lead for the Wildcats. Two minutes and five seconds to go in the game. Givens behind to Truman Clater. Timeout, Kentucky with 2.01 to go. 2.01 to go, and a very important point by Al McGuire, because a corner shot, not the best percentage shot you would want, and now, of course, Notre Dame has to force Kentucky to shoot with the one-and-one one and get back and get a bucket here. Well, not only now, Al, as you have to say, you, you not only are playing against the team, you're playing against the clock, regardless of what side you're on, and that becomes extremely important. You know, I, uh, I'd like to cut in here just for one second. You know, the fellow that started all this was Coach Rupp, and he was the coach's coach, and I, in memory of him, I'd like to just uh, thanks for what he put into basketball, and he was awfully important to my life and to the many, many thousands of athletes that play throughout the nation. The man in the brown suit, Adolph Rupp, over 800 victories and four NCAA championships, perhaps meant as much to the evolution of college basketball as anybody. Adolph Rupp, who passed away recently, and uh, the symbol of basketball in the bluegrass country. And, of course, we'll have a special tribute later in the season when uh, Kentucky appears on NBC at Rupp Arena, named after Coach Rupp. Don't forget, on Monday, the Rose Bowl, Washington against Michigan at 4.30 Eastern Time, followed at 8 o'clock by the Orange Bowl, Arkansas and Oklahoma. We'll have Lou Holtz, the Arkansas coach, wired for his comments throughout the game. But also, keep in mind, we will have a special halftime extravaganza you will love, a hey, Walt Disney score? pageant. 2.01 to go in the game, 67 to 66. Joe Hall directing his team as Kyle Macy will inbound. Hall has brought his team three times to the NCAA tournament and once to the NIT. They were champs in 76. Roby outside. Good pressure by Notre Dame. Roby did a good job that time being the outlet pass man. He's hemmed in, goes out to Kyle Macy with the outside shot. And a three-point Kentucky lead with 142 to play. Three big shots by Macy put him in this kind of position. Notre Dame has to score on this possession. Branding the point guard. Watched by Macy. Batten is free at the top. Swinging around to Duck Williams. Baseline jumper off the rim. Taken by Gibbons. Lost control to stop the Kentucky break. And uh, Williams was in a crowd at the baseline. That is probably a fortunate break for Gibbons not to be able to go all the way because the clock is important to him. We have 111 to go. And what a block inside by Lambeer. And we'll have a jump ball. Lambeer came up and made a tremendous defensive play inside. He sure did, Dick. It was a great play because James Lee had position. Good pass by Givens inside. Lee had position, but look at that block. This Notre Dame team is physical. And, of course, uh, Kentucky is also. So Lee will jump number 32 for Kentucky. And Hanslick for Notre Dame number 42. And they'll jump it again. And before they do, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC-TV, New York. Tip is won by Kentucky, and a big tip it is, with one minute to go in the ball game. 69 to 66, the Wildcats by three. They led by eight at the half. Al? Notre Dame got a foul intentionally. Right now, they cannot waste any more time. Hit them. See if he misses the shot. Stop jerking around. Macy. Got Macy, who's a great foul shooter, and Clater, the guy's handling the ball, the guy to foul. 
if they can get it to him is Lee. They can't wait, Philly. They've got to come out and hit now. 35 seconds is. to go. Lee or Plater gets it out to Macy. Long. 30 seconds to go as we wind down, and a foul is finally called with 30 seconds to go. And now they have to hope there is a miss. Stinger Phelps was calling for the same thing you were, Al, and the only problem, I'm sure, with the kids is the fact that he didn't want to follow a 90% shooter. Bill Hamlin. That didn't bother me, Billy, because at the point I'm figuring, what difference does it make if the box being eaten up to box your opponent, not Kentucky? Good point. Bill Hanslick is fouled out of the ball game. They used a lot of time before they fouled somebody. And with 30 seconds to go in the ball game, it's 69 to 66, and Macy will uh, put it up, and a chance, perhaps, barring some turnovers, to uh, maybe put the game away for Kentucky. Well, and if he does, you have to remember the big shots that he made. That jumper he made from the the angle shot that he made uh, earlier got Kentucky back into the ball game. He made three straight field goals there, and he's really been the key to Kentucky. A very solid ball player. Al McGuire, what do you think has been? The key factor in Notre Dame having the three-point lead. Now they're down by three. Were they too impatient that they rushed too many shots? Um, I thought they lost a little bit of their patience. But, you know, I'm sitting here second-guessing these two coaches. And I, I don't mean that as, as being a wise guy because I admire both of them. And I, uh, I'm just trying to be interesting to the fans out there and show the way I would do it. But uh, both these clubs have blown me off the court many, many times. Well, but one of the fun aspects of any game, of course, is to try to match wits with the men calling the shots, and of course, uh, we can all second guess, but they have the first guess, and they don't have the opportunity of hindsight. See, why I was pushing it, Dixie, is that uh, they were three points, so you need the ball twice. If you only needed the ball once, they could have could have been a little cozy, but three down, you've got to get the ball twice outside of a of a mortal sin, which is a three-point play, if the Kentucky's not going to commit that at the end of the game. We have something interesting right here. There was one timeout called, and I'm not so sure Digger hasn't called two timeouts, or taken two timeouts, because he had a little bit more to say than what 60 seconds would allow. Now he's going to let him go back out there, and it'll be interesting to see if the officials let him get by with that. Good move. Hanslick fouled out with eight points. Don't forget, tomorrow, the AFC Championship game, Starting at 1.30 with NFL 77, Denver against Oakland at Mile High Stadium at 2 o'clock, and the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl Monday. What a weekend of sports on NBC. 30 seconds to play in the game. Macy with a big one. 17 points. Givens the high score with 18, and Kyle can knock that individual record up. 71-66 with... 28 seconds to go in the game. Notre Dame has to put it up and in a hurry. They've got to get a good shot, though, and they lose it. That happens so many times. You're thinking about the shot, not handling the ball. Gibbons is triple teamed and fouled by Tribuca. With 16 seconds to go, Kentucky is going to hold on and retain the number one ranking. 16 seconds remaining, Al. Great game. It, it's curtains now. It's all she wrote, but just an outstanding college game. I'd like to congratulate Digger and, and Coach Hall did a splendid job. It's a great way to get out of the gate for 1978, our broadcast. And it's great to have you, uh, Al McGuire, with your insights on this telecast. And we'll be looking forward to your comments the rest of the season and, of course, the regular Billy Packer. He misses the one and one Woolridge the rebound. 14 seconds to go. 71-66. They loop it in now to Williams. Baseline throws it up. Lambeer lays it in. Timeout. Notre Dame. Six seconds to go. 71 to 68. And strange things have happened with six seconds. They sure have. That was a fine play by Lambeer. He caught the ball off balance, made the shot, and called timeout almost instantaneously. And what you're trying to do is win ball games. What deck is talking about right now diggers down there and he's saying i want the five seconds called in case we do a good job on an out of bounds situation and i can remember a playoff game in which they did just that against a fine cincinnati ball club a couple of years ago in the playoffs they just prevented the inbound pass you can look for notre dame to try to do that again 
Six seconds to go, Al. Yeah, uh, Coach Hall is telling his guys, if we turn the ball over, let Notre Dame score. Please don't give a three-point play. Digger will put a tall man in to take the guy taking the ball out of bounds, so they got to throw the ball on the higher trajectory. But the key to the whole thing is no three-point play and a turnover with Kentucky, and the game's over. Wildcats uh, dominated play in the early going. As uh, we know that it's only ours till 1978, and the great crew we have here, the technicians, the cameramen, the audio men, all wish you a happy new year, as all of us do at NBC Sports. But in the first half, Joe Hall's Kentucky team had a 12-point lead. They were in control. The lead was narrowed to eight at the half, and in the second half, Notre Dame dominated. They had the momentum, narrowed the lead, and took the lead by three points. A little bit of patience and Kentucky storm back. They're in control as Roby gets the pass. Digger Phelps is yelling it should be traveling. Yeah, he's just trying to get anything he can right now, and you can't blame him. But a good call by the ref. Wilcox commits the foul, and Roby will go to the line. Four seconds to go. Digger Phelps, 36 years old, taken to the Notre Dame to the NCAA tournament four years in a row. I think you can see a club, but both of these clubs that you pointed out many times, Dick, uh, have to be considered as almost sure bets to get an NCAA playoffs this year, and they're going to be very difficult to beat. Could you imagine this game in South Bend? <laughs> <laughs> Give out the Heisman Award. <laughs> I can imagine this game anywhere. Uh, Kentucky fans have been really great for their ball club and probably had an awful lot to do with them getting back into it. 73-68, they count down.